Hello and welcome to the show on this week's Downhill Chaos. We shall be having a go with some rally cars and we start with the Mitsubishi Evo 9. Now I'm expecting these to be pretty quick down this course. They are well suited to this kind of stage built being rally cars. Uh, so yeah, this should be, these vehicles should be towards the top of our leaderboard. The Evo gets bumped around quite a bit in the first corner but we make it through uh, relatively uh, unscathed. Uh, however, a little further down the run and it was the first of the jump. I got a huge amount of air time and there I wasn't going to survive that. Uh, I took the jump a little bit too far to the right. Massive air time, bounced off the floor and then into uh, a cliff face. And I managed to beach the car as well, which was clever. Yeah, I'm, I can't get it out of there. It is... Uh, well and truly stuck. The big jumps were being a little bit of a problem for the Mitsubishi. That's the second time we're, we're not stopping that. There is no way we're stopping it. Well, I mean, a tree stopped it in the end. But uh, yeah, on the landing, again, on the landing of the bigger jumps, the Evo got chucked about and thrown into a trial. We ended up running out of brakes. And again, we're still, we're bouncing, we're bouncing. And to try and stop, please stop, please stop, just about. Just about got it stopped. We're still getting thrown around a little bit. And there's a tree. And now we're facing the wrong way with a destroyed drive line. Uh, perhaps a little, a slightly wonky hitbox on that tree, maybe. I didn't think I'd clip the tree. But, um, yeah, again, you can see how much the car is getting thrown about on some of the bigger bumps. Uh, I wasn't having a problem with the Mound of Doom. The Mitsubishi could drive over that. It was the next corner that... Uh, <laughs> It didn't like not rolled a vehicle there before uh, in true rally style of course you can carry on uh, the vehicle is this is a incredibly strong uh, car it's not really surprising rally vehicles are fairly tough you re well I don't say regularly but you do see them roll over they get the fans to help them push it back on its wheels and then they'll carry on uh, rally cars are pretty damn strong and this one was proving to be yeah, so, uh, it did take a lot to, uh, to damage this car. Coming up to a jump, that's not how you take that jump. We're wheeling. Yeah, we're not going to stop that at all. Now we're going to do some sort of pirouettes on our nose. And Oh dear, we're off down here again. And another flip. And we're going to land it eventually at the bottom of the mountain. Uh, as you can see, strong vehicle. Uh, we have killed the back wheels. I think we've killed one of the front wheels. And yeah, it's not moving from out of there. But sort of the actual sort of centre shell of the car. I can't remember what they call it now. Uh, is pretty much intact. Second corner, out of position. Ran a bit too wide. And we're going to do a little dance on our roof. And land it again. The bump, the Evo dealt with the bumps pretty well. It's better than quite a few of the vehicles that I've driven down here, but it could still have some issues. Didn't take very long to get a, a clean run out of the Mitsubishi. This is a nice car to drive. It handles very, very well. It's very easy to drive this one. One of the easier to drive cars I've found in Beam. Uh, yeah, it's very, very nice to drive. You can throw it into the corners. My only criticism with it is it just feels like it's lacking power. It just doesn't feel like it's quite powerful enough as you're coming out of these corners. It doesn't quite have the punch I would expect from a from a rally car. It's yeah, just not quite quick enough. Lovely vehicle to drive, very, very easy to control. This one, one of the best handling mods I've driven. One, one of the easiest cars to drive. It's notoriously tricky to drive the faster cars on here. I um, can't remember quite, I don't really know quite why it is. Something to do with sort of like the traction uh, model on this game can be a little bit wonky at times. Uh, but this is a lovely vehicle to drive. Uh, just slight lack of speed and it does get thrown around on some of the bigger bumps. It does deal with the small bumps fairly well. Uh, again, sure, this is a rally car and it is designed for off-roading. This is a pretty extreme off-roading course with some fairly hefty, hefty-sized bumps. Suspension perhaps a little too stiff for uh, for this kind of course. As we come around the final corner, you can see it getting chucked about a bit here and there. And just a run to the finish line, and it is across the line for the Evo, and we pinged a wheel. But there, oh, there it goes. It's gone. It's, it's going back down the course again. And I may have may have broken my Mitsubishi. Apart from the ending bit, it got down the run without any damage. Uh, I think I might have had a little bit of a scrape on the front bumper. It doesn't look like it's quite sitting right. Uh, yeah, it's not going anywhere uh, without its front wheel. Uh, a lovely car to drive, this one. Very easy to drive. Uh, just, it's a shame. I, I'd like to see it with a couple more hundred horsepower, perhaps. And then I think this would be a really, uh, a real monster of a car. Up next, 
we have the Subaru Impreza 22B. Personally, I'm more of a Mitsubishi person. Uh, my favourite is the Evo 6 Toy Mackinac Edition. The Impreza 22B, though, comes a very close second. Of all the Imprezas, this is by far my favourite one. Uh, so I was looking forward to having a go with this car. It turns out this is very similar to the Evo. Quite a nice vehicle to drive. We can turn into the first corner. It gets bumped about a little bit, so it's going to get airtime, there always is. Um, but it's very easy to control, and through the next few corners, you can sort of just flick it into the corners, and you will you will be okay. And the suspension deals with the little bumps without any problems. The big jumps, well, yeah. Um, I may have got that one a little bit wrong. A little too far to the left there, and I've... Uh, I've rolled it slightly and uh, now we go sliding down the hill uh, on <laughs> on our roof I was surprised that this thing was actually look at it is making the corner it's going to just it's very slowly but it looks like it is going to come on car you can make it you can slide down the <laughs> you actually make the corner which uh, I will yeah that's pretty cool and um, but it's going it is going rather slowly and I'll eventually uh, run out of steam uh, first corner Again, turn in, we are oh, bouncing and there's a wheelie and uh oh, that's a wrong line and there's the man of doom and can't do very much about that. But <laughs> it's another one of those annoying things where you, you're sort of getting thrown about and then you commit to the turn and you realise it's not gone. You're going to have a problem. I was hoping I could get away with it. You can't. In the Evo, you could. You could hit that mound without any problems. In the Impreza, uh, it will flick you onto your roof. Again, over here. We've just got it stopped. There's a down with the tree spun us round. The jumps were being quite nasty. I have fairly similarly, really, between the Evo and the Impreza. If you land the jumps a bit awkwardly, you just kind of got pinged back up in the air, which made it very difficult to control the car. Uh, and here, well, that's not gone particularly well to plan. Now we've done many a roll and spin and flip and landed it. Um, yeah, that, again, it's exactly the same problem. You saw it on the landing and it pinged up. I do love the detailing on this model as well. You've got all the fuel tank and all the wires in the back. Uh, the, these, well, all of the three cars in this one here are incredibly highly detailed. Uh, very, very cool mods for these ones. Uh, it was slightly slipping down the hill. Handbrakes not working fantastically on it. But, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, there we go. Again, coming through the first quarter gets a big jump and that's in a little bit of trouble. There we go. Hit the Mound of Doom and it's, it's flung the car the furthest with the Impreza. That's gone quite a long way uh, from that little roll and um, slightly, but it would still work if it would if it could be righted. It would still be driving. As I said, this this much like the Evo is another very very strong car. Well, we did eventually get a final. Actually, it wasn't particularly bad. Again, <laughs> very very similar to the Evo in many ways. This car, lovely to drive, very fairly easy to drive. Deals with the bumps pretty well. Got to be a little bit careful in places. I believe this vehicle does roll over a bit easier than the Evo. It also has the same lack of power, not quite as quick as I would ideally like it uh, for tackling this car. Still a quick car, don't get me wrong, but uh, I would just like a little bit more power to kind of throw it around the corners and just to get that acceleration, that launch out of some of the corners uh, to get a bit quicker time. As you can see, is it's a little bit angry at the bump, sort of bouncing around. This time, I get the tabletop jump right, avoid the big bump on the inside as we come around uh, this next corner. You'll see how much... <laughs> <laughs> he just gets bucked around. You can't actually see the bumps there very well. They're in the shadow of the tree that uh, really upset some of the vehicles. And this is one of them that uh, it didn't like very much. We're coming up towards the second jump now. I have to be a little bit careful on this. I've kind of learnt with some of these faster vehicles, you can't be flat out towards that jump. You have to actually back off a little bit. Otherwise, you, you kind of get airborne at exactly the wrong time and end up ploughing into the, sort of the, the landing zone. So, yeah, you have to be a little bit slower coming up towards that jump. It's around the final corner for the Impreza and then just a blast across the line and there we go the Impreza has made it didn't lose a wheel this time I've slightly got it stuck um yeah very very similar to the Evo really in many ways could do with a little bit more power however it is a lovely vehicle to drive uh, I it got down there without any damage the only damage on it is from when I was trying to stop it at the end I think I managed to make one of the wheels not quite circular which was uh <laughs> A little bit interesting, but yeah, Impreza, great fun to drive. Tch, I would love to see a little bit of a faster version uh, of it. Our third and final vehicle for today is a real contender for the top spot. This is the VW Polo WRC Edition. Uh, this is a very fast, uh, very fast car, this one. Handbrake, not quite as good as I would like. <laughs> Having a little bit of trouble keeping the car stationary for that, uh, that opening shot. Uh, as you can see already, it is a lot quicker accelerating 
than the Evo or the Impreza. It does make it interesting for the first corner, quite scary. Uh, the first time I took that, ran it very, very wide. This does have enough power to kind of chuck it around the corners in the way that I want. It's a lot, again, another car that is absolutely lovely to drive. Guess where we had our first problem? Sure enough, tabletop jump. Now we're not turning understeer. There's a tree there. May have, may have broken things. Um, a little bit, but this is a lovely car to drive. You really can kind of flick it into the corners. It does have, it has an interesting habit of very weak hinges. The doors love to ping open on this car. And there we go, there goes the other side. Uh, we might be in a bit of trouble because we're carrying too much speed. Oh dear. We've, we've got, oh, we lost a wheel. Uh, <laughs> we're never seeing that wheel again. Um, yeah, I may have broken that one slightly. The hinges for all of the, the random bits are a little bit a little bit weak. They do like to fall apart. Uh, the other thing this car has is slightly weird handling characteristics as we here we sort of understeer off. It is much quicker than the other two vehicles. And if you try and take that first corner the same way I would take with the Evo or the Impreza, you are going to smack it into a tree. Especially if you hit a jump at exactly the wrong time such as that. That's a pretty nasty shunt as well. There goes the wheel again. It's uh, off, off down the cliff. The Polo is still going though. It is not he doesn't, doesn't want to give up. It shall carry on. I'm not sure how you survive that sort of a crash, but it doesn't handle particularly well, but it will try its very best to drag itself around. Uh, strange handling characteristics, yes. This car is quite understeery. In fact, it's very understeery. Uh, or if you're kind of trying to steer it normally, the best way to try and get it around a corner is to actually rip the handbrake and try and kind of slide it around, which goes against pretty much everything I normally drive like. Um, but it does, it makes it a weird little car to drive. I was still having problems with that. Blooming jump was causing all sorts of problems. Again, we've got understeer. Uh, almost got away, just. We've got, now we've got the, bo <laughs> we've got the bonnet up uh, and all of the hinges are broken. I've, <laughs> one of the doors is flapping. I'm not sure if the other door is broken. The bonnet is still up. There we go. Glad I wasn't trying to drive that in bonnet view or in um, cockpit view, sorry. Otherwise, you wouldn't have seen the <laughs> anything, so it wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, in the end, I would fall off the road in a silly manner. I can't even remember. Not particularly spectacular. Uh, the bumps were causing some problems. Just about managed to get it turned. It may have turned in a little bit too early. You cannot cut the corners on this course. There is just no way of doing it. Because um, that's what's going to happen if you try. Uh, I might have fallen off the mountain. I think I lost a wheel. Again, loving the detail on uh, this particular mod. Uh, as you can see with the Polo, uh, I am um, I'm trying to like flick it into the corners to actually get it turned. If you aren't sliding the car, it does that. It's just understeering off the road. A little bit of a weird uh, handling characteristic to get used to, as everything is flapping around and completely broken this time. I'm not sure what's going on with the back suspension at all there. That's, yeah, that's quite a broken... Uh, VW Polo, got to be very careful with this car. If you if you don't kind of flick it into the corner, you have an awful lot of understeer. I've taken a too shallow a line into turn one. There's a big jump, and we've ripped the front half off the car off. Uh, that's mm, you could have some really nasty looking crashes uh, on that first turn. After a while, it took a bit longer with this car, as it is quite a lot quicker and uh, quite a bit trickier to drive with this, with this, the way you just have to drive it. Uh, you do still get thrown around quite a lot on some of the bumps. This is one of the better vehicles for dealing with the bumps, I would say, but again, much like with the, the two cars that have gone before, the really big bumps and it doesn't have the suspension travel, doesn't have the ride height to deal with it. Smaller bumps is okay. Uh, as you can see as well, I am really just sort of sliding it into every single corner. This is the only way I could find to get this car to really turn for some of these tight, tight turns. Uh, not, I'm not used to having to do that with vehicles. It's not normally how I would drive, but it's the quickest way I could get the polo around the course. Otherwise, you just get stuck with it understeering, and then you have to be incredibly slow through the corners. Uh, again, you can see some of the big bumps were causing a little bit of problem for the polo uh, in the braking zone. Not as bad as some of the other vehicles. It does smooth out some of the bumps quite nicely. Uh, over the second of the jumps, again, having to be very cautious in this polo, it does pick up speed massively quickly. So, <laughs> yeah, I had, to, I had to slow it down a little bit to make sure I can get over that jump safely. Coming up towards the final turn, the bonnet is slightly flapping about, but that doesn't matter. It's just a drag race across the line, and we're not going to stop that. And bing, off goes another wheel, and we've parked it in the garage quite nicely. Well, ish. <laughs> Yeah, we made it to the bottom of the mountain with the pilot. Again, most of the damage there is done once we cross the line. I think we, the, the bonnet was flapping slightly uh, for the final couple of corners. The wheel is still on the track. We shall quickly, let's go pick up the wheel. 
Can we pick up the wheel? Can we, we can't really stop very well. Um, surprised how well this car drove with only three wheels. Come on, we can... No, it's not quite right. We can just shunt it backwards and forwards. There we go. The wheel is... Uh, it is there. We've, we've made it to the bottom of the mountain, though, with the Polo. Great fun car to drive this. Just got to be a, a little bit aware of that understeer. You have got to kind of throw it around a bit more than I I would normally with cars. Anyway, it is on to the times. And could the Polo beat the Scarab? Not quite. It was close. It was very close, in fact. Just over a second between the two of them. But the Polo could not quite set the fastest tyre down the mountain. I think a lot of the time it loses is just some of the nastier bumps the car getting thrown around and you can't put the power down. Uh, especially um, coming out of that hairpin with the tree. I think I lost a fair bit of time there. Also, you have to be very cautious over the second jump, which you could you could go a lot faster with the Scarab because the Scarab could deal with it, whereas the Polo just can't. The Evo and the Subaru set very similar times with a 17.2 and a 17.7 respectively. Uh, go into third and fourth, just beating the the cover. That cover is actually very very quick, considering that's right up behind uh, an Impreza 22B. However, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.